Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Jennifer Saunders. In the news this week, as Scotland votes no to independence, CCTV footage outside Buckingham Palace shows how impartial the Queen really was. <laughs> party conference, John Prescott offers Andrew Neil the chance to see the tattoo of a pork pie on his belly. <laughs> no! <laughs> and in Venice, George Clooney's wedding attracts the usual sad celebrity gawpers. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is Conservative MP Peter Bone, who, after the recent expose, is now no longer the most embarrassing bone in the Tory party. Please welcome in Mr Peter Bone, MP. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is a comedian and proud Scotsman who, despite his huge success, still lives in Britain. Just like Alex <laughs> Salmon. <laughs> Please welcome Armando Iannucci. we start with the biggest stories of the week? Paul and Amanda, take a yeah. look at this. Ah, uh, this is a new contraceptive that's been released. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and there is uh, our friend Nigel with his new friend who, um, is, uh... Keep the hand down, my Fiora! <laughs> <laughs> my Fiora! My Fiora! My Fiora! I love you, my Fiora! <laughs> Does that basically cover it? <laughs> <laughs> basically covers it. Yeah. This is the news that UKIP have been attracting more Tory defectives. Defectives. Oh, defectives. <laughs> <laughs> More Tory defectors, <laughs> was. After Mark Reckless MP followed Douglas Carswell and joined UKIP at the weekend. Which means there'll be another by-election. Yay! <laughs> Didn't he go to fancy dress party as a Nazi or something? No, 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 no. That was another Tory. No, that's that's another Tory. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't the fancy dress party, it was normal day <laughs> casual wear <laughs> around the house. Yeah. Mark Reckless has defected to UKIP, mm. here he is. <laughs> but he was a friend of yours, wasn't he? Yes, you must know him quite well. Um, yeah, Mark's a very principled uh, conservative who... Um... Not anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think it's a cunning ploy. Do you? Mm. Yes, because I think he's gone over to UKIP and then they're all going to mm. come back and we're going to be one happy family. But what's his, um, what's behind, what's the... I can't even be bothered to ask. <laughs> uh, yeah. okay, you can't let that answer go by. What do you mean you're going to be a, a happy family? Well, all right's got to come together, isn't you it? Think I he's mean, we're, back? We're, look, what, what David Cameron believes in and Nigel Farage believe in are basically the same things. I mean, what should happen? They should be put oh, into. You, you just lost Cameron all the votes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can, in in can regard we, to. Can we have policy. the referendum again? Because I want to get out. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> What do um, constituents in Rochester think of Reckless? This is Channel 4's Michael Crick. What do you make of uh, Mark Reckless? He's left the Conservatives and joined UKIP. Uh, the man's a flouty pelm vessel. He should be hodded <laughs> into Solomon. <laughs> nice to see, see that ZZ Top have got an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> But Peter, as a prominent, as a, well, prominent, as another right-wing Tory MP, <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, you've obviously been fingered by the press, haven't you? As a... <laughs> no, honestly, shush. As a potential defector. <laughs> haven't you? Well, the more... Have you tempted, you well, tempted, ever can, can I make the announcement now? Yes, yeah. Before, oh, that would be good, wouldn't it, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> After a, a lot of thought, I've decided that I'm going to stay in the Conservative Party. <laughs> Oh, that's a disappointment. <laughs> we thought Even you might I join pretended. Labour. <laughs> <laughs> I did consider the Liberal Democrats. Did you? Mm. That's Somebody what? has to. Well... <laughs> <laughs> so you're definitely not going? I absolutely, I mean, definitely not going tonight. <laughs> and is it... I just want to get absolutely hmm. clear. Is it all right? In Scotland, we're allowed to call you the effing Tories, is that, is that yeah. right? But well, actually, I don't think it's restricted to Scotland. OK, well, you can have it on your posters at the election. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> vote, <laughs> vote for the Tories. Tories. Vote for change, vote for the effing shitting Tories. <laughs> so the defections were timed to coincide with the Tory conference. Anyone want to see Cameron's impression of Hague? Let's have a look. We all remember those lyrical tones in a hall like this, 
all those years ago. Some of you won't be here in 30 years' time. <laughs> all right, I, I won't give up the day job. <laughs> he might. Oh. <laughs> Depends how we vote. <laughs> what is the great scandal about British cheese, according to the Secretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, Liz Truss? I don't think we're going to be allowed to eat cheese anymore. Well, let's have a look at what Liz Truss had to say. Yeah. We import two-thirds of our cheese. <laughs> that is a disgrace. <laughs> Yeah, weird. It, and if you're wondering what Liz Truss mm. is up to in December, let's have a look. In December, I'll be in Beijing, opening up new pork markets. <laughs> she likes to enjoy herself on holiday, doesn't she? <laughs> and who was the darling of the Tory conference this year? Theresa May? Oh, they like the look of her. And mm. then there's Boris, so there's the choice. Who would you go for? Mm. If you stay in the Tory party, <laughs> that is. Well, I mean, the Prime Minister is going nowhere. And that is true. And he... <laughs> this is the Tory party conference, which was ever so slightly overshadowed by the defection to UKIP of Mark Reckless. David Cameron was shocked by the departure of Mr. Reckless and is now keeping a very close eye on Mr. Treacherous, Mr. Bastard, <laughs> and of course, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Ian and Peter, take a look at this. <laughs> Paisley pajamas, <laughs> rather Indeed. small pattern. Uh, that's a middle aged man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's just uh, enlarging it. <laughs> oh dear, that's one of your lot. Did you mm. remember him? Yes, he was Minister for Civil Society. <laughs> and he was being very polite in, in his way. No, 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 this, real, this, this story is about a sting, isn't it? This mm. is about a national newspaper, shall we call them the mirror for the sake of argument, yes. setting yeah. up a bloke well, that's the to truth. look like a woman and really mm -hmm. just sort of enticing a Conservative MP to do something that some people might say was unusual. Yeah. Would you say it was unusual? Well, I think it's... I, I have to say... I have to say, in all fairness, to wear Paisley pyjamas is completely unusual. How did the Mirror justify the publication of this story? It they sounds it really famous. funny. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. No, in fact, they oh. said Brooks knew Mark was a legitimate target as he was the Minister for Civil Society and the founder of Women to Win a campaign to get more females into politics. <laughs> it would only be hypocrisy if he was the Minister for Genital Concealment. <laughs> then, yeah, then there is a... I think there is a public interest. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. The Sunday Mirror's editor vigorously defended the paper's actions, saying subterfuge was used in this investigation and we have been very clear about that from the start. <laughs> She was called Sophie Whittam. Oh, was she? Yeah, she was pretending to be a Tory activist. She's saying, hello, big boy, I love your pension speech. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 26 and beautiful. And they go, gosh, she's really interested in me. <laughs> Can anyone name any of the other MPs that um, didn't fall? For didn't. Sophie's charms? Mm. Um, <laughs> according to the Mail, there's Brandon Lewis, to whom Sophie tweeted... Happy birthday, Brandon Lewis, in brackets, housing minister. <laughs> Hashtag legend. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. What a legend. Yeah. And she also tweeted, witty maiden speech by fitty Rob Jenrick, MP for Newark. <laughs> fit, fit, fit. <laughs> arr, arr, Rob. Fitty fit legend hashtag. <laughs> and MP Charlie Elphick coolly fended her off. Elphick, here I am at a dog chipping event in Dover. <laughs> and there he is. <laughs> Sophie, cute. Sophie, the dogs are nice too. <laughs> Elphick, lovely Jack Russells. <laughs> Well, that's the first time I've ever heard them called that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and 
what is this case being seen as a big test for? Ipso. Ipso. Mm. I what does that stand for? It stands for the Independent Press Standards Office. Operation... Organisation. Organisation. You should know this. No, I shouldn't. I'm not a member. <laughs> oh. I, oh. I always get them confused with ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> And why has this come at a bad time for the Mirror Group newspapers? They've just agreed to pay out to all these people and they said, we did hack mm. your phones, we said we didn't, we did after all. It's mm -hmm. exactly like the Murdoch case. Mm. Do you think anyone in the Mirror Group is going to be prosecuted on the Sunday Mirror or the, the Mirror formerly edited by Piers Morgan? I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Who has already had a payout from the Mirror? Is it Sven Goran Eriksson? <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can see it's a before and after picture. What happened in between? <laughs> <laughs> Was that the effect of Ulrika? <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Armando, here's another for you. Oh, right, uh, this is uh, obviously a bit of Wagnerian opera, perhaps. Women applaud in Wagnerian opera. They've always been very fond of it. Um, <laughs> and a judge. The only thing I can think of my mm. judges this week was there was a case saying it's now legal... Copyright? It, it's uh -huh. legal to... Good parody yes. existing shows uh -huh. on the internet, as long as they're funny. And in fact, what the judge's decision hinges on is that the new law requires humorous or satirical effect, as opposed to merely humorous or satirical intent. What? <laughs> <laughs> so you can't just say, oh, I meant my thing to be a joke. Your thing will actually have to make the judge laugh. Well, that's how most comedy works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what must your parody not be? Well, you can't use the House of Commons, I know that. You can, you're still not allowed oh. to take footage of the House of Commons and do funny things So the prime it. source of comic material yeah. is, is, is outside yeah. the remit of the law. That's right. Yeah. We're not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Except if you answer the text with the... <laughs> <laughs> I was just Steady. thinking Newmark would be a great range of pyjamas that <laughs> do up properly in the front. <laughs> Well, they could come with the todger already attached to the outside. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a mashup, Peter? Uh, no. Do you know what that is? No. Well, it's where people take other people's videos and slice them up and make their own version on YouTube. Have you ever heard of YouTube, Peter? <laughs> it's, um... I, I, I... No. no. <laughs> Well, there's someone who does this kind of thing called Cassette Boy. Oh. And because the law has changed, the yes. BBC sent their legal correspondent to track him down and interview him. Let's have a look. The man responsible for that is known as Cassette Boy. <laughs> he agreed to talk to me on condition he could protect his identity by wearing a large cassette tape on his head. Tell me about the legal issues and frustrations that you know, you've had to negotiate in, in doing your work. It feels like censorship. It feels like our chosen form of expression is, is being censored. It's like being a painter in a country where paint is illegal. So let's have a look at Cassette Boy's latest oeuvre posted this week. Topically enough, it's a mashup of David Cameron's conference speeches. Thank you. Thank you. We've been recording the music video, and it goes like this. We don't care if you're driven to despair. Don't you dare say it's not fair. I'm not saying it's not funny. It is for me. I've got loads of money. <laughs> Talking about funny things on film, there's also proof this week that Victorians did have a sense of humour, as proved by a range of photographs from the 1880s, such as this one, and this one, <laughs> and this one. <laughs> Ian and Peter, here's another one for you. Oh, well, this is Gulf War Three. Um, oh, there we are, that's our entire Air Force. <laughs> and that's the opposition. I thought those two pilots were mooning, weren't, weren't they? they? Yes, it was. <laughs> yeah. 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 We were intervening again, and there was a vote in the House of Commons. Uh -huh. uh, what are we supposed to call the baddies in this conflict? ISIL, ISIS, mm -hmm. IS, the mm -hmm. Caliphate, some lunatics. <laughs> How come nobody noticed what ISIS were up to over the summer? World Cup. <laughs> Where was David Cameron? 
On holiday. Yes. <laughs> um, and with IS just a few miles away from Baghdad, how are the Iraqis trying to fend off their advance? Uh, installing mirrors. So when they're running towards, I think there's somebody coming towards them, so they run away. <laughs> Doesn't always work. By laughing at them. Oh. Iraqi TV have just aired episode one of a sitcom called Mythical State, ridiculing IS and its leader in a sort of It Ain't Our Fuck Mom style sitcom. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> Some very I'm brave gonna... actors. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be better if had you have been watching crawling across. <laughs> <laughs> Will someone in ISIS eventually have to decide whether that was funny? <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll be one of their judges. Yes. Who are renowned for their well, sense of humour. <laughs> Spot the Joker in there. Well, there was three characters. There's yes, the woman yeah. in green, the yeah. Joker. Yeah. So who's the guy on the right? These are the judges Sedan? for the X Factor. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where do ISIS get their money from? The co-op. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real scandal. Is it from ISIS? Yes. <laughs> Very good. Apparently, they get the money from captured Iraqi oil wells and banks, but it's also alleged they are heavily funded by the Saudis. Now, why would the Saudis be funding IS? Because they're Sunnis, and they've uh -huh. been exporting extremism and terrorism throughout the region, mm -hmm. allegedly. I was just going to say that also, by funding Islamic fundamentalism, it pays off the guilt they feel for their lives of luxury. A bit like Jimmy Savile's charity work. Um, oh, come on! Grow up! Dear sir, we represent the Saudis. <laughs> Suggestion we're in any way like Mr. James Safford. Appalling <laughs> slur. Client's reputation. I've I... received a few of those letters, you can tell. There was a crucial debate in the House of Commons last week. Now, what does Mrs. Bone think about sending the bombers in? Because uh... you like to bring your wife into debates, don't you? Talk about uh, it. Yes. Didn't yes. David Cameron tell the Commons that he spends a lot of his time trying to give pleasure to Mrs. Bone? <laughs> yes, he did say that. Was that in a text? <laughs> Quite a lot of countries are involved in the bombing of IS, including the United Arab Emirates. Who is their star bomber? Is a female bomber. Yes. Her name is Mariam Al Mansouri. She's been picked up on by all the papers and on television in America. Let's have a look at that. The first female pilot piloting for the UAE. There she was, leading the strikes. Dropped the bombs on ISIS on Monday night. This is really incredible. Major Mariam Al Mansouri is who did this. Remarkable. Very excited. I wish it was an American pilot. I'll take. A woman doing this any day to them. The problem is, after she bombed it, she, didn't, she couldn't park it. I salute her. Would that be considered boobs on the ground or no? Oh my what God. kind of salute would you salute her, Greg? Would you be brave? Did you just say what I thought you were I'm confused as to which one's the enemy now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was very well balanced because you had one person who was a woman who was an idiot and then you had two men who were also idiots. So <laughs> there was a sort of general inanity balance mm. that I think television in America does really well. <laughs> this is our attack on Iraq to put an end to the war on terror. Thanks to the new terror threat in the Middle East, a few firms have decided to change their name, including British banking investment firm ISIS Equity Partners. <laughs> We're relieved to no longer be associated with such an evil organisation, <laughs> said a spokesman for Islamic State. <laughs> Some of the money funding ISIS is coming from Qatar, which raises the chilling prospect of the Islamic State playing in the 2022 World Cup. <laughs> now that's a group of death. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Paul and Amando, yeah. your four are a haggis, James Bond, Doncaster and... Armando Iannucci himself. Oh, yeah. Mr. Iannucci next to me is Scottish. The Haggis is Scottish, so it's presumably this sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's James Bond rather than Roger Moore. Um, mm -hmm. His parents were Scottish, weren't they? Were they? He was in school in Scotland. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I mean, it can't be the simple thing that they're all associated with Scotland apart from Doncaster, because that would be idiotic. This would be like, Junior, have I got news for you? <laughs> <laughs> have I got news for you, light? Um, <laughs> the Doncaster used to be in Scotland, and there was a boundary issue oh, or something. Yeah, so it used to be in Scotland. Close. Is it the Haggis, then? Is, is the Haggis... 
Uh, it's James Bond, me, and Doncaster. We all came from Scotland. But then moved elsewhere. And the haggis... Has always been Scottish. So haggis is the odd one out. Haggis is the odd one out. Absolutely. Because according to a food historian, mm -hmm. um, it was invented by the English before being hijacked by Scottish nationalists. So... Well, I, I think we let them have it, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think that Doncaster is still officially Scottish. Passionate argument has raged between England and Scotland as to who owns Doncaster, <laughs> as neither side really wants it. Yeah. <laughs> and what did you make of the whole referendum thing? That I kind of enjoyed the bribery. That was great, because Scotland mm. were never going to vote for independence. <laughs> they just, you think they it just, just got loved suffered. every day there was a new bribe. It was fantastic. And now that he's stepped down, what's Alex Salmon going to do now? Well, actually, I don't really care. We just found a rather good clip of him here greeting a voter behind Laura Kernsberg's shoulder. This is it, the last push for this man and these people's dreams. But still, with just a few hours before the polling stations open, there are still thousands of undecided voters around the country. <laughs> How do you know that's not a Sunday Mirror journalist in disguise? <laughs> <laughs> now, voters wrangled over the important issues mm. in the mm. referendum, over tax, currency and nationalism. For some, some of the reasons were a little less political. What do you think will decide you? I think it'll be yes, but I want it to be a no because I want to see match of the day on a Saturday. <laughs> so, that's Sir Roger Moore's Bond, and Sir Roger is doing a tour of the country to promote his book at the moment. A reporter yeah. from a newspaper in Torquay, the Herald Express, got hold of this exclusive and tweeted it. Roger Moore enjoys Scotch Egg on Way to Torquay's show. Which provoked a very angry response from Sir Roger himself. Actually, I had ham hock tureen. <laughs> <laughs> the right. newspaper then went with this headline. <laughs> oh, Sutton legend, Roger Moore shuns Scotch Egg for ham hock tureen on route to Torquay. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Peter, here are yours. A man named Gareth. George Michael. Karl Marx and Dr. Van Helsing. Gareth is the ordinary member of the public that Ed Miliband met on Hampstead Heath, which is near where he lives. Yep. In yep. his conference speech, mm -hmm. he pointed out a number of people mm -hmm. that he'd met. So I think the link is George Michael Ed met on Hampstead Heath. <laughs> <laughs> Karl Marx is mm -hmm. buried in Highgate Cemetery, which is quite near there. Dr. Van Helsing was looking for vampires in yes. Hampstead. They all wander around on Hampstead Heath, yeah. except Dr. Van Helsing. So it's, he's the odd one out, Van Helsing. Y yes, they've all met a man on Hampstead Heath, except for Dr. Van Helsing, who in Bram Stoker's novel went there looking for a vampire. At least that's what he told Mrs. Van Helsing. <laughs> Let's have a look at um, the man named Gareth on Newsnight with a Newsnight caption. Gareth got his real name then, <laughs> in quotation marks. What did Gareth think of um, Ed's speech? He thought it was all right. Didn't enjoy it too much. He said, I think this is the first conference speech I've ever watched, before adding, I hope it will be my last. <laughs> <laughs> During his speech, Ed promised that Labour would raise the minimum wage. Now, who do we know who wouldn't be a fan of that, Peter? I don't know. <laughs> Were you not once dubbed Britain's meanest boss? Um, yes. And did you not once pay someone 87 pence an hour? Well, no, it wasn't 87 pence an hour. Not that much. <laughs> no, it wasn't that much. So how much was it? 8.7 pence. Yeah, something like that. Were you uh, embarrassed? Me? Yeah. No, no. It was, a, it was a government training scheme, actually. Was it really? Yes, it was a government <laughs> training scheme. So yeah. the government Who was training on? scheme you were on said it? you should only pay... 87p an hour. Well, 30 pounds a week, actually. Right. And for some reason, a paper, shall we just call, say, well, the mirror, yeah. dubbed mm. me the meanest boss in Britain, which I thought was. Well, because you're not mean, correct. because how much do you pay your wife to be your secretary? Uh, um, <laughs> it, 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 it is. It is close to that figure. It is, because I think, according to the mirror, Mrs. Bone gets over £45,000, which is the highest salary paid to an MP spouse. Well, is that a government training scheme? <laughs> How many hours underlayed. is she working at 87 pence an hour to earn that sort of money? <laughs> and it's time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication, The Probe, <laughs> the magazine of the dentist industry. 
and we'll start with... Sometimes I hate being a dentist because what? I don't like teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I have absolutely no concept of personal hygiene. <laughs> I have no hands. <laughs> Abu Hamza retraining. <laughs> We could put all the drill bits on, couldn't we? Yes. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Is it because I know they hate me? Oh. I've got lots of friends who are dentists, and they say it's very sad because, you know, they people come to see them and they go, oh, love to see you, and they go, oh. <laughs> You have lots of friends who are dentists? I've got two. <laughs> two friends. Two That's friends. hardly lots, is it, Mr. It's a, well, I'd go, I haven't got many friends. <laughs> <laughs> The answer is quite odd. It is, sometimes I hate being a dentist because it takes all the fun out of the movies. <laughs> Next. Northern Irish police launch scratch and sniff what? Oh, I thought cannabis cards. This is what sort of, when people grow cannabis, it smells like this. So you scratch the card and then you're meant to always go, and go around your neighbour's garden and see if you've got the same smell. But the trouble is the kids are collecting these and smoking them. So... <laughs> I thought it was a replacement for stop and search. <laughs> Scratch and sniff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the answer is cannabis cards. Yeah. I wouldn't have said it otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> These are to help the public recognise cannabis factories in Northern Ireland. If you want to locate the grass in your street, he's the one sniffing the card and phoning the police. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, goodbye what after 93 years? Dimbleby. <laughs> goodbye, 1921. No, what's no, goodbye? Brilliant. Got rid of. You see, that's maths. That's maths. Yeah. I've worked that out. <laughs> goodbye, oh, the tax disc. Yes. Oh, yes. Well done. Yeah. Tax disc. Yep. Now, if the authorities want to spot an untaxed car, he's normally hosting a panel show on Channel <laughs> Four. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are eight points to Ian and Peter, nine points to Amanda and Paul. Oh. No. Can it be? On which note we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Peter Bone MP, Paul Merton and Armando Iannucci. And I leave you with the news that, in a further bid to be recognised by the international community as a fully functioning nation, the Islamic State enters Miss World. <laughs> <laughs> There's confusion at the British Fish Awards when the judge announces that first prize has gone to a massive Pollock. <laughs> and at the Birmingham Hilton, there's a sharp intake of breath from the floor below as Theresa May steps into the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. And Sue Perkins is in the host chair next Friday at 9. Well, next on BBC One, Bullies Beware, Miss Poston's got you in her sights at big school. And with Graham Norton later tonight, Emma Thompson, Hugh Grant and Hollywood hotshot Luke Evans at 10.35.